hook up to no internet on the farm. That's a big no-no. So I gotta find out what's going on. I think it's at our pump house on the modem there. So I'm gonna go reset it, but I have to physically drive there because I can't access it through the network right now. It's okay, this only happens once in a while. For the speed of internet that we get at the farm, it's worth the hassle to happen every now and then. All right, at our pump house. So I was able to ping all the devices up into this point right here. That's Ubiquity Nano Beam. And that's the last of the line, or I should say the beginning of the line if you really wanna figure out where the internet comes from. I can access that unit. But the modem inside, I can't. Typically means the modem, for whatever reason, locked up. Hopefully it's not fried, but we'll find out. This is our pump house. This is where we get all of our water for our spraying. We uh, dug this well in a few years back. I shouldn't say well, this pump house. It actually is plumbed down across a four inch line down the field here, crosses the county road and goes into that big water tank over there, which is our city water. And we get a little bit of water pressure here because we're almost level with that tank, uh, but not enough really to get much volume to fill a sprayer fast. So we have a lift pump in there that helps boost the pressure. So that way we get a little more flow. We gotta fix the internet problem. Let's go inside. You can hear we've got an electric heater in there running right now, help it keep that warm enough. It's actually plenty warmer here. I should go down there and turn the heat down a little bit. It's not gonna freeze in this weather, but here's our culprit. Here's where our fiber comes in. And uh, these boxes here, somehow it converts it and whatnot and runs it around to this. My guess is this is what my problem is. Hoping it's not this, because if it's this, then I gotta start calling our ISP and figure that out. But let's just go ahead and reset this thing. So good old, flick the switch off, give it a minute, flick it back on, and I'll test the internet and see if it works. <laughs> It is warm in here. This heater's been running really strong. Why are we on? Is this thing stuck? Um, there's 100 watts. I think it would just turn up too high. For whatever reason, that thing was turned up on max, so it's probably running day in and day out, keeping this about 80 degrees in here, which is good. It means no frozen water pumps, and you can buy a lot of electric heaters for the price of a meter and some pumps but we don't need it that hot in here. I'll turn it down a notch. All right, internet test, and it looks like we're connected to the Wi-Fi. Good. And then the next step would be for me to ping my uh, devices over at the farm site, and I just got it, so we're good to go. Love technology. Sometimes it can drive you crazy, but it's actually been pretty good here. I love it. Don't know what happened. Did one of its phantom needs to uh, have uh, someone come by and hard boot it. So I did. Let's get out of here. You know something that's really discouraging? We just did this bud literally like two years ago, I think, so we went through it. Practically brand new decals, pinstriping. Junk. Thought I bought some good stuff on the internet, obviously did not. So well, I'll live with it this year, but maybe this summer, if we get some time, we can strip off these old ones and get some better quality stuff and put it on there, because that is not holding up. It's just cracking and breaking in the sunlight. It's supposed to have been automotive industry or uh, quality. No. It's not. Well, while I'm working on trucks, I suppose the next thing I should do is work on our spray tender. That's our uh, white GMC Volvo. It's like a 94, I believe. Been sitting a while. I'm pretty sure the batteries are not gonna wanna crank. We'll give her a shot and just see. I'm probably gonna be making the same walk again back to get the pickup back over here to charge on it. But if I get her started, I'll pull it over. A lot of fittings need to put back together again that we winterized and just kind of check it over, make sure it's good. Probably won't be doing much spraying until at the earliest next week, but I'd like to get the truck around where I've got time. It's beautiful weather right now. Great time to be working on stuff outside. So might as well check this off the list. Move on to the next thing. Absolutely nothing. Let's see if it's even connected. We might have just disconnected it. This truck does not have a cutoff on the power. Actually, it is disconnected. Okay, well, let me hook it up. That might be my saving grace here. Someone unhooked it. I appreciate whoever you are. All right, let's try take number two. Well, at least it's got power. The batteries are, I thought they were fairly newer, but don't hold a charge like they should. Let's go get the jumper cables. Remember what I said about that walk? And call it the walk of shame. Been spending all morning thinking about this trailer. I do this every year. It seems like I'm always changing things on it. We were thinking, possibly even looking for a different trailer because this is our drop deck, which should be 
hauling machinery when you need it because it's got a, a nice ramp on the end of it. Beaver tail that drops down with ramps. Well, we just turned into our spray trailer because we needed the capacity and this was our trailer we had on the farm and it's just become that and now it's our water tender. But I think I'm gonna rechange a lot of the way the plumbing is on this as well as position the tanks differently to maximize the space. There's a lot of wasted space on this trailer and it's been pretty tight when you get the shuttles on here and boxes, not a lot of room. But I'm gonna move this truck because I need to get it over to where the fabricating equipment is so I can go to town on this. I'm gonna continue this uh, rough wood deck because wood's easy to replace, easy to repair, and don't worry about water sitting on it or anything like that. We got a bunch of old two by sixes that are kind of a heavier cut. Been sitting in a stack over by the building over here for a while now. They'll work great for this. So I'm gonna build basically some braces or supports that'll go into each one of these. One will run over and across the other side, drop down. Same with this one, go over, drop down. I'll tie them together, and then I'll have supports and centers that attach this really heavy angle iron that they've got welded on here, because this stuff is made for a dozer to drive over an excavator, so it's plenty strong. It's gonna support about halfway to that tank. You're looking at about 7,000 pounds or so. So it's really not to be crazy strong, but I definitely wanna make it so it's not gonna come apart. And I also wanna make it so I can take it off in case we need to haul something we don't want it. Got some nice heavy square tubing right here that we had purchased a while back for some other projects that didn't quite happen. So I'm gonna scounge around, see what I can find. I might have come up with some channel that'll fit nicely in here and uh, just start fabbing this together. So uh, enjoy the ride. I think leg arms will be happy when I'm done with this. That's my goal. I just wanna make him say, nice. So we'll see if we can get that out of him. Okay, project update. I've got the basic structure fabricated. This is some really heavy two and a half by two and a half square tubing. And I went ahead and built some channel to attach to the side of the trailer. I've got some uh, heavy angle iron welded a stop so it can't slide down any further. Now, I know you're thinking there's no way that's gonna hold like eight, 9,000 pounds of water potentially. I know, because I don't have any center supports yet under here. They've got the I-beams which run down this trailer come all the way into this beaver tail here to support the weight of, well, I think this thing was meant for, I think I mentioned earlier, an excavator or some kind of crawler of some type to crawl up here. I'm gonna build supports that come off of the I-beams here and go up and attach to this two by two square tubing, heavy walled square tubing. So there'll be four posts, one, two, three, four. I might even do more. And then the next step is to cut the two by six lumber or two by eights, whatever I ended up getting, lay it across here. There is kind of a gap here, a little bigger than I was hoping, but all I had for this heavy iron was just these two sticks of square tubing. So I'm kind of going off of what I had in my supply on the shelf. I think it's gonna be fine. It's gonna also be supported right here by this angle iron. So it'll be supported here, here, and here. If I need be, which maybe I might do as an afterthought, run a couple pieces across, just connect them together, the square tubing. And that way just brings a little more structure to it. But I think this is gonna hold that weight just fine. So just envision this tank right here going back right there. We're gonna do all this and I guarantee you, after all this work of replumbing all this and moving all this stuff around, a nice spray trailer is gonna pop up and we're gonna be like, hmm, we should buy that. And then turn this back into a drop deck to haul stuff around. Mark my words. All right, let's go get some lumber. I think I got some uh, nice planks over here that'll work great for this. I'll go cut them up and then we can lay them on top of that and see what it looks like. Then I'll whip out some uh, black primer or paint and paint that thing. This is good weather. This morning it was cold. Now it's it's nice. You know, most of the time when you leave a pile of lumber like this, it just rots and eventually throw it away someday. So I would try to make a point of remembering that it's here so I can use it. So this is a great time to take advantage of some of this lumber, but like some of this stuff, forming when we did concrete work. I'm not gonna use that again because it's gonna be rotten by the time we use it. Should have gotten chucked. 
but that's what happens. So I'll keep digging at this pile and uh, throw out a bunch. I got a bunch of nails on them, so I gotta pound those out, but looks like good lumber. It's gonna be great. All right, we'll see how far that gets me. I, I didn't measure the width. I think it's eight feet, but I'll start chopping these up into 45 inch lengths and that should give me where I need to be. Pretty close. I'm gonna put a piece of angle iron along the edge here so that way it doesn't chip and break off. So that's not as critical. There can be a little bit of fluctuation in that. But this side here, I gotta pull them back just enough so they're just barely resting on the edge. And then I'm gonna put a piece of either angle iron or plywood, a strip right along the bottom there to support this seam right here and it'll rest on that heavy angle iron. That's part of the trailer. So I'll count how many more I need here. Go cut them, bring them here, lay them down. Then I'm gonna put a plate underneath, screw them all together so it's one big piece. You can take it off in one whole piece rather than taking them individually because I want this to be able to remove off when we need to use this trailer. So far, so good. If you look down this, that's looking pretty level with the rest of the trailer. So uh, leg arms, I'm waiting for the word. Huh? Yeah, I'll get it from him eventually. Yeah, well, I think this is where I want it. I got the wood cut. I think the best bet now is I'm gonna throw some paint on this. Don't have a roller. Used up all the rollers when I was doing that railing and this is all I got left. It's an old one. So we'll see how well it works. Fortunately, this isn't a critical piece that needs to be really pretty. Plus this trailer needs painted. So I'm just go ahead and lather it up with a lot of paint and see how long it lasts. Could not find a brush, could not find a roller. I found one in the trash can, I guess you'd say, that was rock hard, didn't work. Tried wrapping the rag around the roller, it didn't work. So I just took a rag and a glove and I wiped the paint on, just like I'm staining something. Kind of old school, but it's on there. Except for I see a spot right back there where I missed. Okay, well, I got more to do. But I'm gonna go ahead, lay out all the pieces, screw some two by fours in the back of them to make basically a big pad, set that baby on there, even though the paint's wet, it's farm machinery. And then I'll get a piece of angle iron, cut one out, lay it on the backside, that'll crew over the edge. Weld that on, run paint over that. And then all that'll be locked down on there. And then we can scoot this tank over here. I'm getting excited. Still haven't heard those words from leg arms yet about, you know, he's gonna say, nice. That's what I'm hoping he'll say, but I don't know. We'll see. He'll usually uh, give his opinion when it's all done. So I'll let you know how it goes. There you have it. So that's built. The measurements are correct. It should fit nicely on top of there. Now I just gotta find some guys to help lift that thing because I'm not strong enough to lift that by myself. Let's see what they're up to. Think you'd help me lift this up on here? Sure. Paint's not dry, but it'll be okay. There we go. Huh. That's gonna make for a lot more space up on here. Look how much space we got here. Yeah, it's gonna be way better utilized. Okay, well, I'll pick up that where I left off. Not tomorrow, because tomorrow I gotta pick up some toys. You guys will see soon. But more to do on this. When I get all the fittings, all the plumbing, all the goodies to move stuff around, and I'll finish button that all up. That's a good start. Took first half of the day to figure out what I was gonna do with the second half of the day to do it. Not as good as leg arms. And he still hasn't said nice yet. He said, uh, you do good work, Nick. I guess that's okay. Still hoping for nice though. All right, well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Over Easter weekend, we had a pretty good snowstorm. Uh, it wasn't forecasted to do a lot, like two inches, maybe three at most, but I think it put down four, possibly five inches of pretty wet snow. It was cold, got down to like four degrees at night. So it's a little chilly out. The ground is not getting anywhere near ready to start planting. But in a week, they're forecasting 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So that'll help pick up the pace, but it's okay because we still got things to do because I just brought in the shop, the spray trailer, as you can see right here. <laughs> so this is this 1250 gallon tank that we bought put on top of the deck drop deck It's a good bonus tank to have with the uh, just about under 4,000 gallon capacity of the two Green tanks here when you're out spraying on some of our land There's an area where you need a little bit more and this extra tank gives you about that much more if you drive over there with a full sprayer and a full truck But this two inch line here is just gravity fed into here And it's too slow because by the time you start pulling out of that tank because this tank's got to get below that tank It gravity feeds pretty slow in so I'm gonna tie a three inch into that and the three is gonna run down in the whole system that'll really help speed up the pace as well as filling that tank fast so i gotta take all this off right here i'm gonna plug this line go into this tank this two inch line and i might ream out this hole and put the three inch here i haven't decided yet so let's uh start figuring this out
Okay, I got the line off the clear 1200 gallon tank up here and then off the bottom of this two inch 90 degree street elbow. The 2000 gallon tank here, I'll probably take the street off and then put a plug in there and cap that. Or I may leave a valve on there just in case we wanna hook a two inch line to this tank. I don't know why we would because we'll fill the system from the three inch line, which is right here on the ground, which is gonna run along the bottom of here, the edge of this trailer. It'll be a nice hookup to plug into, so. But that can be done down the road. That's not critical right now. So I'm gonna focus on the three inch. I gotta cut this hole out bigger to fit the three inch line through it. This is the, I guess the bong they call it. So that's gotta go inside there. There's a suction in. So that sits inside the tank and rests on the bottom. And that's what pulls the fluid out. All right, time to go inside. One benefit of being slim. There is not a lot of wiggle room there to get in that. I gotta go on the inside and I gotta fit this through from the inside while my dad puts the nut on the other side. I'm a little concerned that I'm not gonna have enough space for this gasket to seal tight, this O-ring here. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I might be able to get it cinched up tight and it'll stretch the plastic around and squish together, but a little nervous about that. Cause I just cut a big hole in the side of this tank and uh, that's gonna be tough to patch if this doesn't work. Let's get in. it's gonna work. The downside is I won't know until we we'll get this tank full of water. And I can't fill this tank full of water until I get the rest of the plumbing done. So uh, if it doesn't work, I'll be draining this thing, going in there, taking this off and putting a ton of silicone around it and then squishing it back up again, letting it cure and then filling it back up. But these are just the steps you gotta take. But I think this is gonna work. So it's gonna come straight out here, drop down, come under here. This one's gonna come out, drop down, tie into it, steps are gonna get moved. There'll be a valve there and a valve here to run the two tanks. And then it'll run all the way down the length of the trailer to that big tank back there. And then at some point over here, it's gonna tee up and go into the suction side of the pump. Well, it's time to call it a day, so I'm gonna head home and pick this up tomorrow. But so far, I'm doing what I had envisioned in my mind. Thought about poking holes through the actual deck of the trailer, running the tubing down underneath and around, and I just didn't want to cut holes in that. I don't know if this is a problem being out like three or four inches from the edge of the trailer, considering this might be a wide load now, but this trailer pretty much stays out on the back country, out on our farm all the time when it has the trailer set up. We never take us on paved roads. So I don't think that'll be a problem, but I'm trying to keep it as low profile as I can as far as width. We'll tuck this up underneath, wire it up real tight, so that way it travels along the underside of this. But so far, so good. Just hope I have enough length here, because uh, am I not about enough? We'll find out. All right, back at it. Let's get this done so I get this mess cleaned up. Let's put this in place, so that way I can figure out where I'm gonna tie into this three inch line going underneath here. So I'll unbolt that, take it up, turn it, put it down. Coffee break, no coffee break. Then finish the line. All right, that's all done. I'm liking it. I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot of water dripping throughout all these different joints, but we'll see if it works out. Hopefully nothing will leak. But the next step now, I gotta take all this yellow hose right here, this suction hose, 
and hook it up to all the different valves we put on this handler because there's gonna be shuttles on the different corners one here one over here another one over here so i'll have all that tied into this manifold right here that i can turn in just basically how we had it last time but just a little bit better so i'll figure the length out run those out there and then oh the shuttle's on here obviously but when they do come on we'll hook them up so far so good then the last thing i gotta do is just take the output two inch line right here turn it 90 and run to the side so that way that's where we'll hook the sprayers into well i think we are done 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 put all the new hoses in all these lines are going to stretch to whether barrels or shuttles tanks are secured you gotta get a battery for the gauge over the meter there it's not turning on but that's gonna happen but otherwise i think we're good so i'm gonna get this out of the shop and uh go park it hit the road with my beautiful wife and uh, one kid, he's in the back. The others, uh, we pawned off with grandparents. We're on a mission today. We're gonna pick up some items. Got the gooseneck trailer hooked up to my dad's Duramax, and we're gonna bring back to the farm something that we're really excited about. We've never had on the farm before. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really cool. So I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it. But I can't show it this time. It'll be in the next episode. So stay tuned for that one. Anyways, guys, stay tuned for this. It's gonna be fun. Um, some exciting stuff coming our way, and. Uh, God bless, take care, stay tuned for the next episode because it's gonna be fast. And leave a comment below what you think it is, what they might be. Oh, I'm saying too much. Okay, I gotta go. Leave a comment. <laughs>